Good evening everyone, apologies for the uh, lack of light. This is my final night here in France on our holiday and I'm down by the, uh, the lake. You've probably just seen some shots of it. It's absolutely lovely during the daytime. It's about half nine at night now and it's not a soul about it, it is a kind of a fishing lake I think. Um, I think it's actually more of a river but we're calling it a lake anyway and yeah I've scouted out a spot uh, behind some big rocks down sort of by the by the water's edge almost but far enough so that the water won't get to me so yeah gonna be wild camping tonight and I've got a Canadian IMP ration pack to review got a little bit of food for breakfast and most importantly I've got a couple of ciders as well little French ciders to review uh, I've been drinking them in the house all week haven't filmed them or reviewed them yet I'll show you the lake and where I am in the morning you'll get a better view of it um, yeah there's no one about I think you have to pay to fish here but the guy whose house we're staying in, he's kind of said, look, you can just camp here as long as you don't make a noise or nuisance or anything. No one will care anyway. Should be fine. They turn a blind eye to wild camping here in France, apparently. Let's hope so. Don't want to get in trouble with the gendarmes. <laughs> Anyways, I've got my uh, Rab Survival Bivy uh, with me tonight. It's the first time taking it out, testing it. Just heading down to the water's edge now. Well, I've got my uh, little solid fuel stove set up with some kindling, fire lighters, wood wall and stuff. It's all on some really thick tin foil and that's on sort of like a, a ledge a little bit lower down. That's my uh, bag with extra fuel and wood and stuff. Should last me through the night and stuff. And yeah, I'm having that down there. And then there's this ledge here and this is where I'm gonna sleep it's these massive rocks here and uh, yeah I'm hidden out of sight behind those and the lake is out there in the darkness there and you can just see that's the edge of the, the rocks there where it meets the water so yeah this is the uh, Grab survival zone bivy. It's like 340 something grams. It's pretty lightweight. Nice blue colour. And it's just a drawstring hood. So I'm going to be testing that out tonight. We're not forecast any rain. It's meant to be really warm apparently. So I thought perfect time to be setting that up. I'm not going to set it up just yet though. I'm going to sit and uh, have a couple of ciders and then think about doing some food which as I said before is that Canadian IMP baked beans <laughs> menu number six and I've got three ciders uh, French ciders so it's one of those lamb mordieu uh, rouge hard ciders that I had uh, last night at the campsite having one of those again it's my final one of them and then I've got these little Kerry sack Cider or cedar Breton, and there's a do and a brute. And so far, it seems all ciders in France that have do in the name I think taste a lot better. So, can't really tell the difference. That one's a lot sharper, a lot stronger as well. That's 4.5%, that one's only 2%. So, hence why I'm uh, bringing a few of them. And uh, yeah, that one's 6%, so I just got some uh, some Volvic Zest Citron <laughs> lemon water basically in there. Rest of me uh, camping gears in there, usual sort of setup really, it's just, it's just usually the same sleeping bag, sleeping mats, pillow, bottles, bags, it's just the only thing I change out is the shelters usually, but it's the same kit as usual. I've got my first cider to try out, this uh, Kerry, Kerry Sack 
Cedra Breton, to the brute one. So it's 4.5 percent. These diddy little bottles. There we go. Cheers is to a brilliant week in France. Cheers, everyone. Really smooth taste to these uh, these French ciders. They're not particularly strong. Um, faint apple taste to it. Not a lot really, but it's sort of still quite sweet. Not as sweet as the the do or de ones. It's brute one. It's a bit of a brute. <laughs> It's not my favourite of the three though, so I'm going to give this one a, a 6 out of 10. Right, well, I'm on to my second cider of the evening. So this is another Kerisac Sidra Breton. It's the du or de <laughs> cider. So this one's only 2%. It's really, really sweet. And a lot more refreshing as well. Um, I think it's probably because it's it's so weak. It's it's two percent. I mean, it's it's basically like normal fresh apple juice. Really, it's not it's not really alcoholic at all. So, and to think you can buy these in the bars round here, and they charge you an arm and a leg for them for a two percent cider. It's a cheek, really. They might as well give you a bottle of Coke, <laughs> really. Although that's probably more expensive as well, but. No, I like this one a lot. Mm. And for that reason, oh, my fire's just kicked into life. For that reason, I'm going to give this this little cider. I think I'm going to give it an 8.5 out of 10. Right. Well, I've uh, set my survival zone rab bivy bag up. Got my rucksack and two litres of water in the Nalgins next to it sort of down on a little ledge here I'm on to uh, my third and final cider that La Mordieu Rouge hard cider the 6% one, the strongest one of the lot all the uh, used all the wood now all the um, kindling and stuff I've got some fire lighters and some wood wool left but I'll probably keep that for the morning and uh, do a hot drink with that. I've also still got the Canadian IMP wrap pack in there. I'm going to have that for breakfast, I think. I think it is actually from the breakfast menu range that they do, so it seemed fitting to do that, really. And seeing as it's uh, Canadian, they sort of speak a bit of French, I think. I thought it's the next best thing. I only had one French ration pack, so I've already done that. Well, I've just cracked open this... Uh La Mordieu, hard cider, 6% volume, it's a 27.5 centilitre bottle, so a little bit more this time, not a lot more, uh, all it says is it's rouge, so red, mm. much sharper taste to it, almost a, almost a slight caramel taste, but it's not as sweet and it's not as fizzy either, it's a lot, it's a, a lot flatter this one. No, I think I'll give it another 6 out of 10. Yeah, it's not bad. Okay, well, it's a bit cramped in here, but I'm inside the bivvy now. And I'm on a bit of a slope here, so... But I've got quite a way before. Um, I'm at the water's edge, so shouldn't be too much of a problem, but... Um, yeah, it's not as comfy as the tent, I'm not going to lie, but... It's warm in here, that's the main thing, and uh, sleeping pad's pretty comfy, the drawstring on the bivvy, you can cinch up um, a fair way, so, but yeah, we'll see how things go anyway, I'm going to get some sleep now, and uh, show you the lake in the morning, let you know how, how the night went really, it's about... It's about 1am now, so I want to try and get up for about about 7, really. Um, I'll see, I'll probably wake up when the sun comes up. It should be good. Anyways, I'll chat to you in the morning. Well, welcome back, everyone. It's about 
2.30 in the morning and it's not quite going according to plan <laughs> that's becoming a regular thing with a lot of my wild camps um, I'm thinking of moving all my stuff back round to kind of the bit sort of um, where all the picnic benches are and stuff ok yeah I'm going to be in full view of everyone if anyone does turn up but this uh, big sort of rocky outcrop next to me has got like a lot of gaps underneath it and I think there's a lot of rats or mice living under there because I can hear stuff gnawing away at stuff next to me when I'm in the bivy bag and like my head's right next to it and probably wouldn't care if I had a tent or anything but just being in a normal bivy bag um, with just a drawstring is slightly disconcerting I think it's the word um, I'm sure they probably wouldn't get in there but as a result I'm struggling to kind of relax and sleep I know it sounds quite pathetic but it's not ideal and I want to try and get some sleep anyway because I've got to get the plane home tomorrow as well so it's going to be quite a tiring, stressful day tomorrow with the airport and stuff. So I think what I'm going to do is, yeah, it's not a lot of stuff to move. It's pretty easy to move a bivy bag and all that. And I'm just going to carry it round there where it's a bit more open. Yeah, I'm going to get the stuff moved now because I'm struggling to really get to sleep properly because it's just on my mind. I have a... Uh plumbed new depths of lowness <laughs> on this channel so I've moved my stuff round sort of closer to sort of like the car park and stuff where it's it's going to get a bit busier and I've found like the furthest park bench from the road and I thought do you know what let's just see if I can fit my bivy bag and all the stuff on top of the bench because they look pretty sturdy they look like they've they've not been here for ages you know they've still got good bolts and rivets on them I've only managed to fit myself on this park bench as you can see that my stuff is down there on the seat I'm actually on the table itself my feet I think might be hanging off the edge but my air mattress is sort of keeping them upright and you know what this is comfy I feel a lot safer I feel like I'm away from the rats and the mice I mean sure enough if if people fishermen come along in the morning they're going to be like what the fuck is this mad English bloke doing he's like a hobo like, you see homeless people sleeping on park benches. Except this one's kitted out in rab stuff. <laughs> this is absolutely mad. It's 3am. I've got a plane to catch tomorrow at 5. And I've decided to sleep literally pretty rough on a bench by a lake in France. Just, yeah. I don't know where my life's gone how it's ended up like this 30 years of age and this is what I'm doing anyways feels a lot better though and I've still got a really nice view of the lake to my left so I'm going to get some sleep now hopefully anyway and uh, try and get up early-ish so that not too many French people see me they'll never ever come to England I'm not representing the country guys, I apologise. I'm not representing us very well. <laughs> Anyways, right, I'll chat to you in the morning. <laughs> Good morning again. Well, I managed to get for about three, four hours sleep tops in the end in my new position up on this, uh, this picnic bench didn't roll off of it in the night I did turn over a couple of times got all my stuff in the rubbish bag there hobo camping rules 
and, uh, I'm beside the lake here as you can see absolute lovely views to wake up to how about that final day in France I'm well pleased uh, yeah I'm glad I uh, I moved positions in the end because as good as a sp it was a great little spot and I will show you it in a minute it just the rats and the mice around there at least I think they were they could have been more shrews who knows but I just thought I don't want them getting in the bag with me it's just and even if they didn't it's just going to keep waking me up and putting me off so I thought nah, it's best to just move it's not going to take long and it didn't it took about five minutes to move all the stuff yeah probably took longer getting in the bivvy bag <laughs> anyways yeah it's all the the steam and the mist rising off of the lake it's about 7am So yeah, I wasn't I weren't lying. I actually slept on top of a picnic bench last night for the last three or four hours. I'll quickly show you where I originally was. I think someone's turned up fishing uh on the far side of the the lake near the road. So there's this big rocky outcrop here, looks pretty cool. I don't know if I could have slept up on the top of it, but I think the rodent problem would have been the same elsewhere. That just leads off into the woods and stuff. There weren't that many good pitches down there, really. It was a bit, a bit naff. So I was down here, down this little pathway, really secluded. And I was originally camped there on this rock here. Notice how much quieter it is. overlooking the lake here so I spent the evening here drinking and whatnot. I set the bivvy up down here I was sat on that ledge there with me little fire down there as you can see I've left no trace but if you look down here there's all these cracks and little gaps under this rock here and that's where I could hear stuff moving about in and like I'm right there and I thought no this is off putting I, could, I swear at one point I could hear something rustling over my uh, black bag that I had my rucksack in and stuff so I thought I've had enough of this every time I tried to move to scare it away it had come back about 10 seconds later so I thought no I'm going up there and I'll be honest with you, it was actually comfier, it was, it was a lot more level. Because um, if I moved suddenly there, I slipped down the rock face. So this was a better choice, I think. But what a great way to end, uh, end my holiday in France. I'm going to get the bivvy packed away now. And I'm going to do myself something to eat for breakfast, do that ration pack. Um, I really need a hot drink. It's actually really, really cold. Well, it's one to remember anyway, not just because it was in France, but because I literally look like some kind of posh homeless person. It's one to tell them at work. What did you do on your holiday in France, Tom? Well, let me tell you this. Right, I've got the bivvy packed away. Just sort of give you a quick rundown of the kit that I used on this little overnighter. So we've got my Osprey Talon 33 litre rucksack. It's been everywhere with me that, it's a bit battered now. In the hip belt pockets I've got uh, sun cream, a wind muff for the camera. I've got uh, some tissues and I've also got a spare cigarette lighter. I've got 
numerous battery packs and cables and a selfie stick that's all for keeping the phone charged of course I'm using it for a camera as well food that's that Canadian IMP there's quite a bit in that be showing you that in a minute uh, fire lighting kit I've got uh, this, there was more of this of course there was like some wood and tinder uh, wood wool now we've just got some matches some fire cubes like barbecue fire lighters and some natural fire lighters in about three plastic bags over the back there a load of tin foil and my solid fuel stove that I've had the fire in my through night TH10 head torch there always comes with me that as does the the through night T10 so it's a, a torch that turns into a lamp I've got an FRH or flameless ration heater there to go with the IMP two litres of water in my uh, rather cool Nalgene Trail Products bottles kindly given to me by Kai aka Fenland Wild Camper cheers again mate old bottle of uh, French Volvic lemon flavoured water my titanium cook pots uh, one's a 650 or 750 I can never remember mill pot and the other one's a 450ml mug in there I've got like a little soap filled Brillo pad for cleaning up with a little microfiber trekking towel a mini Esbit solid fuel stove a couple of tablets another small mini Bic lighter and some matches a wet fire just yes yeah, sort of cooking stuff really some bedtime reading still reading it my ditty bag just contains all odds and ends wet wipes hand sanitizer uh, multi-purpose soap alka-seltzer pain relief tablets another lighter spare battery for my head torch repair kits for mattresses a little bit of toilet tissue my spork for eating with uh, coffee wet wipes peanut butter spare batteries a little mini compass uh, all odds and ends in there really black bag to keep me rucksack in overnight in that bag so like a trash compactor bag or whatever you want to call it I call it a rucksack liner and that's got my cumulus down sleeping bag in that's my Thermarest stuff sack pillow and it's got my baseball cap spare socks uh, mozzie head net in um, it usually contains that, that's my Monte Minimus rain jacket it usually contains this as well my Rab wind valve windproof little pullover jacket thing and thermal leggings and thermal top but I'm wearing all that at the moment um, I've got my Terra Nova laser sleeping pad thin foam pad just to go underneath everything it's mainly to protect this, my OEX Evolution Fulcrum EV uh, inflatable sleeping pad very very comfy I love that thing full length OEX compact pillow the Rab Survival Zone bivy which yeah okay it's just a basic drawstring bivy but it did it it didn't actually get too like uh, too much condensation inside it was all right really um, little bit cramped you know you haven't got as much freedom of movement in it as some of the others but I think it's literally designed for as it says survival zone for kind of when the shit hits the fan and I kind of used it for just a normal wild camp but hey ho and then finally we've got my uh, silver coated ripstop aluminium ground sheet thing which just bounces your body heat back up and a Tyvek ground sheet yeah, anyway that is my kit right let's get this cracked open then so I've got a little uh, soap filled brillo pad that I've added I've also added that porridge to go bar just in case I didn't like any of this I've also added a Maltese's hot chocolate I forgot all about that <laughs> that's just made my morning that has <laughs> right onto the stuff that actually came in the, the IMP so you get this silver coated paper bag which is really cool and everything is 
neatly packed between the two boxes of the two like main mills. Just pull one of those out. So we've got baked beans, Febzo 04. And uh, yeah, that should come in its own little pouch. Yep, Baxter's. So we're going to keep that uh, sleeve, <coughs> put it in a flameless Russian heater, and get that cooking. Ah, I forgot I've included another one as well, so I've actually got two FRHs with me. And then we've got fruit cocktail, uh, peaches, pears, sugar, pineapples, grapes, cherries, citric acid and ascorbic acid, lovely. So I guess you have that cold, obviously. And that's a Baxter's one as well. Then we've got a vanilla protein drink, looking forward to that, that's going to be pretty good. So I'll probably mix that up in the bag and then pour it into one of my bottles. We've got a Canadian uh, spoon. A little bit flimsy but quite a long long handle on it which is good to get down into the pouches. It's a fairly strong looking tissue paper napkin. We've got Peaches and cream oatmeal, that should be good. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, it says hot or cold water. I, I want hot water. I'm literally, it's, it's so cold here by this lake. Uh, and the sun hasn't quite come up yet over the trees to sort of warm me up. We've got a hamburger, bun, pan. So basically your bread. I think it's like a shelf stable bun. A uh, little beverage bag, cold drinks, with a little gusset on the bottom, everyone loves a gusset. We've got a Nescafe, I think that's like a three in one, but it looks like a really big packet, I mean you get like, looks like two servings in there. We've got some raspberry jam, confiture de framboise. For our cold drink, we've got an ice sports drink, glass. Looking forward to that. We've got some Frank's Red Hot Original Hot Sauce. Do you know, I might have to stick that with something if it warms me up. Don't normally like it. We've got a little wet wipe, napkin, a moist towelette, a little paper book of matches. Nice, I'll keep hold of those. And then we've finally got a little mini pack of Tic Tacs. White. Four pieces in there. And that is it. That's not a bad little amount, that. Okay, that's the complete contents of this Canadian IMP. Menu number six, baked beans. Enough yakking, let's get snacking. Someone's uh, just turned up fishing. He's a really friendly French guy actually. He got out and he's here for fishing. He come over, he shook my hand and uh, and I thought, oh, am I in trouble? And he was like, are you fishing? And I was like, no, no. I've, and I just thought, I'm just going to be honest. I just went, yeah, I just camped here overnight. And he's like, oh, oui, oui. And I was, uh, I was like, do you have to pay? Is there a fee for fishing? I said, um, for camping and stuff. And he's like, oh, <laughs> he went, it's a grey area. And I went, yeah, that's what I thought. And he went, oh, you're okay. And uh, he went, I am fishing <laughs> and walked off. But he seemed happy about it. Really, really friendly people here. I mean, what countries do you know where a stranger walks up to another stranger and shakes their hand it's just it's just so out of the blue it's it's mad it's great I like it I think I want to go back to England and just deal with miserable people not everyone but you know what I mean just customs are completely different 
it's so laid back here it's, it's really nice anyways right so here we've got the main going um, I'm going to boil up some water on the little stove down here and uh, get a hot drink on the go I might have that Maltesers hot chocolate with it though just because it will taste even better <laughs> and I'll also make up this um, ice sports drink it's amazing blue colour I don't know if you can see that because the sun's started coming up now so it's in my eyes a bit yeah it's a sports drink I don't know if we can drink it out of this I suppose that's what it's designed for oh it's got like a blue raspberry kind of smell to it yeah, like a blue raspberry kind of taste to it that's really nice that very nice indeed I like that well I'm going to pour it out of this into a into a cup because it's it's really difficult to drink out of and then you miss me mouth I've also mixed up the vanilla protein drink it smelled really nice now I might have put a little bit more in uh, than it was m meant to have but that's because you couldn't see the field line inside so um, yeah 26 grams gonna give that a go give that a go uh, all I'm waiting on is for the water to boil here I'm actually using the uh, little solid fuel stove that came with the French Rat Pack um, had one more cube left so I thought well I'll use it up so that's boiling up my water for my uh, Nest Cafe 3 in 1 it is sweet and creamy it says and my Maltesers hot chocolate I thought I'll mix them together because we all know what Nest Cafe is like uh, the baked beans that's nearly done uh, I basically need to free up these pots so that I can do my peaches and cream oatmeal I'm not going to try and mix it inside the pouch um, it's quite a, quite a small pouch really feels like you get quite a lot in there so I'm looking forward to that um, oh yeah and I want to boil up some water for it anyway uh, we'll get on to the, the hamburger bun and the raspberry jam a little bit later on but I just want to get this stuff done first it seems rather strange for this to uh, to just be baked beans but that's what it is just baked beans I don't know if you can see I've had to sit around the other side because the Sun was like directly in my eyes I couldn't see a thing they look a bit grey in colour very grey in colour they don't look the nicest of beans but I'm hungry let's give them a try it tastes alright I mean the juice is a little bit watery but No, they'd do. I could eat that. After the, the night's sleep I had, to be honest with you, I'm just grateful for any food at the moment. Got a funny aftertaste to them. I don't know if it's slightly metallic, I'm not sure to be honest, but... They're okay, they're not the best beans I've ever had, but... They'll suffice, they're very, very dark in colour. I mean, they are baked beans, but... I don't know, they just look like they've had a hard life, bless them. <laughs> Alright, well that's the beans finished off. The next thing we're going to try out is this peaches and cream oatmeal, which uh, has mixed up quite well, considering I kind of estimated roughly how much water to use. It turned out alright. Smells really nice. I mean, this could be a main meal in itself. You get quite a bit of it. There we go. A little bit runny. Oh, that's beautiful. That's re <laughs> that is really, really nice. I mean, I probably could have made it with a little less water, but I thought I don't know. How, I don't want to have too. I suppose it's better to have too little water because you can always add water to it. But lessons learned. Oh, it's got like little crunchy lumps of what I can assume are like peach in it. Oh, it's so nice. It's quite refreshing actually for a porridge. Say, so, well, it's, they call it oatmeal, but we call it porridge. Mmm. 
that is really really good really good I mean I'm looking at the amount of food here and the calorie content and stuff there's loads I might not need to have lunch at this rate <laughs> so we've had the peaches and cream oatmeal and that was a real winner for me I really liked that it was a uh, better than I expected it to be next we've got the vanilla protein drink which has got 18 grams of protein uh, one gram one gram of carbohydrates no sorry four grams of carbohydrates uh, two grams of fiber two grams of sugar uh, 90 calories sodium 135 milligrams cholesterol 10 milligrams potassium 125 milligrams and calcium it's 30 percent of your daily value so this is um quite a, a healthy little one it's you know it's got a decent amount of protein in it like a normal protein shake but it's not got a lot of sugar in which is interesting uh, pro, uh milk protein concentrate whey protein isolate inulin sea salt natural and artificial flavors xanthan gum sucralose 40 milligrams per packet uh, soy le lecithin and silicon dioxide probably some of that stuff you could probably do without him but still anyway let's give it a go smells nice oh it's very uh very kind of thick and creamy it's nice it almost reminds me of like a mcdonald's milkshake except healthier you can really tell though that it's got that amount of protein in just by like the texture and stuff of it when i've had other protein uh baked goods before versus like normal food you can just tell the difference this is yeah clearly got some uh, uh you know a decent amount of protein in that's really tasty that that's probably the best protein drink i've had so far in a rash pack i think i've only ever had one other um, and that wasn't too good but this this is a winner definitely i'm impressed by this so far the baked beans were baked beans they were okay they were nothing special but everything else so far has, has lived up to it okay we're on to our hot chocolate which is Maltesers which I included um, in this so I added it separately sorry um, and Nescafe 3-in-1 which came with the Rat Pack oh, that's nice it's cooled down enough now and that's perfect it's not too dissimilar from other mockers that I've made before Nescafe is probably my favourite coffee I'm not really a, a coffee fan as I've said many times before but it seems to be the only one that I can I can tolerate and actually enjoy um, if I had to have it on its own I'd go with the Nescafe 3-in-1 but if I can mix with a hot chocolate win-win mm. yeah I've been impressed by this um, wrap pack so far the protein drink was good, the peaches and cream oatmeal was good, the beans weren't too bad, the drink's good. This uh, sports drink, that's the next thing that I'm going to sort of try out. I'm, like I said, I've only got two pots and this one I'm currently like washing up. Um, I'll finish this and then I'll pour that in there, have that. And I, could, I could use my Nalgene bottles, I can't be arsed to be honest. And then... We've still got more food to go. We've still got hamburger bun and some raspberry jam. And then we've still got a fruit cocktail as well. I've only got half hour before I'm getting picked up from here, so I can't believe how much food there is in this in this one like like ration pack. I don't know it's it meant to like if, if it's a breakfast menu so it's meant to tide you over until lunch i'm like i'd spend probably that time trying to eat all of this let alone eating it and then having to do stuff to burn it off to then be ready for lunch it's it's ridiculous how much food there is but can't complain i guess right and then i've got my ice flavored uh 
cold sports drink now there's not a lot of it probably about 250 mil you get oh, it's really nice and I don't know it's like a like a blue raspberry kind of taste to it or oh, it's like you get like the blueberry flavored like things kind of like like Lucas they do and I can't remember what other sports drink company does it now but I've definitely had the flavour before. I wouldn't call it, I wouldn't go as far as to call it ice flavour or anything like that because I mean, what does that I mean? I mean, ice is, is plain. <laughs> it's just, um, this is, yeah, it's a strange taste really, but it's it's really nice. It, it, I think it's just like blue raspberry really. I probably could have added more water to it and just made it a little bit weaker and just add more of it. I'd be happy with that because it's quite strong like this. But as uh, Steve MRE 1989 MRE Info says, if you make it a bit stronger, it gives you a better taste profile. Next thing we'll try is the little, tiny, cute little pack of Tic Tacs, fresh mint flavour. So you get four of them. I know I'm meant to have this at the end, but I'm so full up um, from everything. I just, I don't know if I can manage the fruit cocktail and the hamburger bun with the raspberry jam just yet so so you usually have this at the end just to freshen your breath they're good I've had tic tacs before nothing new there oh yeah really minty my mouth feels a lot fresher now oh that's woke me up <laughs> it's been good though here it's been really good I've enjoyed it I've, I've enjoyed my time in France I've, I've I've left with a different impression of France and its people um, I wouldn't say I had like negative views on the French when I come out here but I just wasn't entirely sure I would like their way of life and stuff and I've got to admit after this week it's completely changed my perception of the country and its people I, it's really nice here I'm not gonna lie um, there's certain parts of it that would make me want almost up sticks and move out here or at the least just have like a holiday home or something and come out here every now and then but just the people are so accommodating and so nice and friendly um, and it's not just because you're tourists and you know they want your money it's just the the average bloke on the street is just friendly to you you know and everyone's very laid back, laissez faire. It's just, you know, it's all tomorrow. Let's do it tomorrow, not now. You know, they're very sociable. You know, you could be going out, you know, to do a bit of shopping or something. You could bump into someone, or you could be, you know, just going out for a quiet drink on your own, like one drink on your own. You bump into someone. I've seen it happening like when we've been out in bars and stuff and they get chatting with people or they meet new people and end up getting a bottle of wine together and a meal and they just sit and socialise and chat drinking and alcohol for them is about socialising not getting shit faced and I really like that and I've noticed that across all the ages it's not just like the old generation it's like elderly people um, young people as well have that mentality which is really seldom seen in Britain anyway I mean it's quite rare so um, don't get me wrong I'm still proud to be from from England I'm still proud to be where I'm from but there are certain ways of life that the French have adopted that I really respect um, they're very proud of their history and stuff as well and there's quite a lot of history as well and I've hopefully I've documented that to you over the last week with the series of videos I've been doing 
Um, so at the time of filming this, I haven't done any editing yet, so I've got my work cut out with that. So I'm going to try and get the videos out as quick as I can. Try not to rush them though as well, so bear with us. Life's good at the moment. And I've had a really, really good time here. <clears throat> so you know, if there are any, any French people watching, I'd like to say thank you very much for making me and my family feel welcome in this country. Just, it's just beautiful here, it's lovely. Yeah, so I really appreciate it. Right, oh God. Do you know what, I might have this stuff later. <laughs> Our flight's at 5 p.m. So, which means it'll probably be more like 6 or 7 p.m. because it'll probably be delayed. I'm just absolutely stuffed, apologies. Um, just use the wet wipe. Hands have got a bit dirty from the fire. Well, as Andy says, it is quite a wet one. Excuse me. I wonder how this is going to affect my stomach, this wrap pack. Oh, very, very citrus smelling. It's nice. So that has been the Canadian IMP. Menu number six, baked beans. Really enjoyed that. It's really good. And these are quite hard to come by as well. And they're a little bit more money than some of the others, but they're well worth it if you can get your hands on one. Are definitely worth trying out especially all the different components and stuff you get with them as i say they do a breakfast range a lunch range and a dinner range so a soldier would pick one from each group and i think there's about six different meals in each um in each in each meal so that's that's pretty cool so there's quite a lot to choose from i'd like to get more of these and try and have a look at all of them <laughs> So anyway, yeah, cheers for watching that anyway. And uh, yeah, putting all my rubbish away in the bins over there, leaving no trace. to the airport. So we'll start off with the hamburger bun. So it's got a little desiccant packet in it. I want that. And it's literally just like two halves of a, a bun. Probably need to slice it a little bit. I've made a right pig's ear of that very dry and very thin I mean it's nothing fancy but it smells like shelf stable and we'll stick our raspberry jam on it a little 20 gram sachet oh, that looks quite decent actually looks just like the strawberry jam <laughs> that I had the other day Right, we've got all of that on one side of the bun. What I'll do is I'll just do like a, a jam sandwich with this, I think. Not bad, the bread's very dry. I mean, you definitely need to jam with it. The jam's quite nice. It's um, not too dissimilar from the strawberry jam, really. Good texture to it. A mixture of smooth and like crunchy. Mm. I don't think the bread's anything really to write home about. Peanut butter in it would be absolutely awful. I don't know how you could eat that. It'd be so dry. Um, 
the wheat snack bread in the <coughs> in the US MREs is usually a lot better I think this is mm, probably the this is probably the weakest component of the IMP so yeah it's quite uh quite dry the the hamburger bun but luckily I've got another little French cider just to wash it down with nice and sweet right final thing we're going to look at in this IMP wrap pack is the fruit cocktail so let's get it out of its pouch it's a cold sleeve so it's backs as again it says you should uh you should cook this but don't know I'm gonna try eating it cold I think excuse me I would have thought you'd eat it cold interesting I haven't got time to cook it now we we'll just have to give it a go I don't know if you're gonna be able to see in there probably not I haven't got a tray again to put it on but it absolutely stinks so that's kind of like what we're looking at it's like a almost like cheesy feet smell to it that can't be right but anyway I haven't cooked it let's see what happens <laughs> three two one got a really funny aftertaste to it it tastes like cheesy feet as well oh. I'm not gonna lie that's awful I don't know it could be the pears peaches really horrible aftertaste to it it's like getting right up my nose I can almost feels like it's going to make my eyes water um, I'm sure you can eat it cold I've never heard of a fruit cocktail having to be heated up before but yeah that's probably not the nicest thing out of all of it it's poor I don't know if I could eat another another spoonful of that really. It's, uh, it's not the best. I see how it goes anyway, but the cherries aren't bad. Um, I literally think it's the pears and the peaches and possibly the grapes that are letting it down, but <laughs> which is most of it really. But the water smells and tastes awful that it's in. But I don't know about that one. <laughs> yeah, so it was, like the first half of it was good, but the these two things were hmm, okay. They weren't brilliant, but overall, it's been a good little uh, good little ration pack. Anyway, once again, big thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed all the France videos, um, and I'll show you the the flight home now and stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Cheers again. Thank you to France for having us. You'll see me again soon. Cheers everyone. See you later. Bye. Okay, we're just at Limoges Airport now and after a two hour delay in hell, we're, uh, we're finally boarding the plane. See you on the plane.